question seven. So for part one, uh, so let's get our diagram all sorted out. So I think the key bit to remember is that we consider tension going upwards here and tension going upwards here. Obviously these two tensions being equal. So we have a set of forces here acting on Q and we have a set of forces over here acting on P. We have the friction going in the opposite direction to the movement and we can break down the weight component into that um, parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. So for part one to cancel, to find the tension in the string, let's just focus upon Q only. So we, um, considering Newton's second, F equals MA, so our net force, well, we're moving downwards here, so our, so our force downwards is greater than the tension, so our force downwards, just the pure weight, so 0.5G less the tension, that's the net force downwards, so F equals the mass of Q, which is 0.5, times the acceleration, which is 1.4, so we can work out that our tension is 21 over 5, or 4.2 Newtons. Now for part two, this is fairly straightforward, this is sort of the norm, normal type question. Remember we're just focusing now on the uh, particle on top of the block. This has got nothing to do with the block itself. So start off by resolving perpendicular to the, um, to the plane. So we have R equaling cos 30 times 0.6G. Um, we're obviously not moving up or down in this direction, so the, the um, forces cancel out. So we have R equaling this blue force here. So that's our adjacent force. So that's why it's 0.6G times cos theta. Uh, cos 30, rather. So that allows us to work out that R is 5.09. Now that's important because that's obviously a component of friction when we go and resolve uh, parallel to the plane. So resolving parallel to the plane, um, obviously we, we're now looking at Newton's second again. We have movement in this direction. So our net force, which is going this direction, so tension is the greater force. So we've got tension minus this component of the weight, so this is the opposite, the 30. So tension going that way, but the two forces going this way are firstly this blue force, that's the weight, so we, so that's the 30, um, sin, uh, sin 30 times 0.6g, but also with less the friction. The friction's also going this direction, so friction is mu, our unknown mu times r, r we've just worked out to be 5.09, and we're now obviously just looking at, at P only here. So our F equals M times A. So our mass of A is of P is 0 0.6 times the acceleration, which is of course also 1.4. This allows us to work backwards to work out that um, mu is uh, 0 0.0825. Now, not that I actually needed to work it out here, but do note that the friction component here mu times r is uh, 0.42. That's going to be important for what I think is the very difficult part three. So for part three, remember we're now considering the block. Okay, so I think most of the forces here are, are, are fair enough. We've got the, um, we've got the friction, and we've got the weight components, um, and w uh, uh, the weight component broken down into the two. And we've got, um, but then we've also, so that's the, so the friction of the block being FR. Now we've also got the effect of the friction between the ball, uh, between the particle and the block. Now be, uh, the friction, um, because the uh, friction of the um, particle on the block was in this direction, the equal and opposite friction cause uh, effect on the block is in the opposite direction. So we're looking for uh, equilibrium, so we're, we're, we're looking for where these forces exactly cancel out. So these two, for, the two frictions in this direction together equals 7 sin 30. We know that the friction um, uh, uh, b between the particle and the block is 0 0.42. That allows us to work out the friction between the block and the slope is 3.08. And therefore, given that we know, um, we can also work out the um, the normal reaction. I should have mentioned that first. The normal reaction here, resolving this direction, we've got R equaling 0 0.6 G cos 30. So we know R is 11.2. That allows us to work out that um, 
our mu must be at least 0.276. Obviously, it can be greater than this, but that's the minimum amount before there's any movement. So mu is greater than or equal to 0.276.